Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. What a show I have for you today because my guest is going to inspire you beyond belief. Why? Because just like us, he's got something that is going to help you move beyond your dreams. Why? Because his is something that is a baseline to launch you in a direction that you want to go. He's an actor. He's a model. He's a voiceover artist. He um, is a singer, a camera operator, a TV presenter, a radio presenter, and wait for it, a father of four. Yes, you are right, the father of four. How do we do all of that? Well, it can be done, and he's going to tell us how. He is known for his role in Cage the Bear, the Black Bang, and really that centers around uh, a group of hackers who join forces with aliens. And, you know, fantasy and uh, sci-fi seems to be very common right now, right? It's very intriguing. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about that and his role as a government agent in this film. Pretty exciting. He's also known uh, for his role in Tit for Tat. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about his role there. I, I, I really, really want to let the cat out of the bag on this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let him share it. But there's even more. He's been in an Emmy award-winning uh, film. Yes, A Crime to Remember. And do you remember it? Mm, well, wait for it. Um, Mike plays a police officer. And if you know me, my background being a retired police officer, this is already intriguing. Yes, it is. I'm pretty excited. And there's three more roles that I really want to talk about. And I'm not going to give too much other than the names for these films because <clears throat> one of them's in post-production. First, uh, one of the shows is um, Project Time. The other is No Way Out. And the one that's in post-production currently um, is called Cat Calling Man. I want to know more about this one specifically mm -hmm. because sometimes we think about this in the female role but at any rate with the drum roll please welcome to the show my guest Mike Provenzano welcome hi Rebecca thanks for having me I am so excited to have you on the show because you've got a lot going on and what an inspiration because you come from a business background and you are launching it forward but with having a family of four children being able to do what you're doing is absolutely incredible. Tell me how you got started. It was uh, honestly fluke. Um, it was something I wanted to do when I was in my 20s, but there was I wasn't even close to being um, prepared for it mentally, physically, anything. I just wasn't. I wasn't there. Um, and um, I was working for a friend of mine on a project, and. Um, he bought a design firm and one of the guys that came with the company was an acting instructor. <laughs> and so when I was finished the project and I was ready to leave the company, um, he said, Mike, you should check this place out. And I was, I literally say, were you blowing smoke up my, you know what? Right. And he goes, no, 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 for real. So I went to an open call with about 50 people. The director said, we're going to invite four of you to come to the, to the class, to the school. I was one of the four that got accepted into it. Um, went to the school for uh, X number of months, got picked up by an agent right afterwards. And that's kind of how I started. It wasn't like, it wasn't something that I thought of. Somebody mentioned it and then it kind of resonated. Uh -huh. And uh, so it was a fluke that I actually got started in the industry, but it was something, like I said, I wanted to do years ago that I just wasn't in the right place to do it. And, um, and now I have that confidence that I probably was lacking to try to start uh, years ago. That's pretty interesting though, but your skills and background place you with that fluke in the position at the right place at the right time with the right background and experience so that you can really portray the roles in the right way. Right. I've, I've said to a lot of people that, um, I've been acting for a little less than three years uh, on camera. I've been acting for about 52 years now, just I haven't been <laughs> acting on camera for that long. 
<laughs> well, as a parent, we kind of have to do that, right? Because that right? a lot of times we don't want certain emotions to reflect onto our children because we don't want them to know, oh, you know, mom or dad's having a bad day right. or, you know, we don't want them to experience something, those kinds of things. So in some ways we are, you know, yeah, actors. Exactly right. Yep, exactly right. So, very interesting. So tell me about a little bit about, I am really interested about Cat Calling Man. Okay, well, that one was a, um, uh, we did it last year up in New York. It was actually shot for a, um, a, a film in China, believe it or not. So it's not even being shown on the, in the United States. Okay. And, um, but it was up in New York, and it was, um, the lead was a Chinese woman, and um, my job was to kind of hit on her outside in the street as she was kind of just hanging out. It was, <laughs> it was pretty fun. Um, it was a supporting role, but it was, it was a blast. Um, and it was, um, it was interesting because it was one of my kind of, you know, one of my first, you know, earlier jobs. And um, it, it's, it was really cool to just go through the process, even though I was just a supporting guy in the background, so to speak there, they truly cared about everybody involved in the project and they wanted to make sure that everything went as smooth as possible, not just for the leads, but for everybody else involved. And that was really a, a cool experience for me. So it was really fun. It was an easy one, but it was a fun one at the same time. Okay. So easy and a supportive role, but so another drum roll, because you are the lead in a current pilot series that you are doing where you are playing a police detective. Are you able to share with the audience about that, or is it something that you can't right now? I think I can share a little bit about it. Um, okay. it's, it's a story about, um, it's called The Door. And the, the story is basically premised around um, people that are in gangs that want to get out of gangs um, safely. Well, the police have created a door for uh gang members to leave safely without the issue of um, you know, if you try to leave gang, you typically don't survive that. Um, and the police have created a, a process by which if someone wants to leave, they can come to the, to the police and the police will uh, put them in protective custody and make sure that they're safe. Um, okay. So, but I, I play a police officer who was going down the bad wrong path for a long time and, um, had kind of a drinking problem and uh, saw the light one day and decided I, I want to do the right thing. Um, I kind of upset a whole bunch of other officers throughout that process, but um, <laughs> in my, my past would not um, let go, you know, it can continues to come back to haunt me, but uh, it was a really, really fun, uh, fun project. And uh, we're close to being finished now, but uh, it was really, really fun. I look forward to seeing how it, how it finally turns out. I'm really excited to see this too. I, um, my background is in law enforcement, so I do have a partiality to watching shows that are crime oriented. And so I, I do like documentaries, um, that have to do with law enforcement. And I also uh, like series. And so it's really amazing to me how, and I'm also prior military. So I am always amazed at how, the film industry can nail certain uh, stereotypes. I am also uh, amazed at how sometimes they can really nail the accuracy of some of the things that we do sure. in, in that, you know, in that field without 100% giving away all of the things that need to, to, to remain um, confidential for um, safety purposes and investigatory purposes and things like that. But nowadays the, there's so much that's just out there that you think, boy, why, you know, that shouldn't be out there because then the bad guy kind of knows how to, or can kind of scheme around it. But at yeah. any rate, mm -hmm. I think it's neat what you're doing and you, your show, the Emmy award winning um, a crime to remember, you've also played, a, had a police role there. Yeah, that was a fun one. That was, um, it was, uh, we were playing police officers from the 1920s. Um, so the suits were heavy, heavy wool. Um, it was this summertime when we did the filming for it. So it was super Ouch. hot, it was crazy. Yes. <laughs> it was really hot. Um, it was, um, but it was my first 
role that I actually got to talk on camera. And uh, so <laughs> it, was a, it was a fun experience up in Brooklyn where we filmed it. Um, the, one of the funnier parts for me was that um, while it was so hot inside, um, we, went to, we went to go outside and they're like, well, you got to put a robe on before you go outside. And I'm like, I didn't understand that at, at first. Okay. And because I was dressed in a policeman's uniform, I couldn't go outside dressed as a policeman because people, right. if there's an issue, they see me looking and they're like, let's go to that guy for help. Um, the funny part was I didn't have a badge on yet and I didn't have the, the holster on. So if I would have went outside, I probably would have looked like a doorman at the same time based on what the uniforms <laughs> looked like back then. Um, but it was a fun one. I had a great experience. Um, and that's the one thing I could say about most of the work I've done. I've, I've had wonderful experiences across the board on every job that I've been on, whether it's been film, commercial, or even print work. Um, I just have, I have a blast on every job I get the, the uh, honor to be part of. You love what you're doing, don't you? I do. I, I'm having so much fun. It's, um, I don't even know what to call it. It's just, I feel, you know, I, I'm a humble guy and, and um, I just feel like I'm blessed that I'm even given the opportunities to go into audition for a project. And then when you get booked for it, it's just, it gives you such a high. It's, 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 uh-huh. it's, just, it's, just, it's just, like I said, I, I have so much fun. And because I have a business background um, and I was in the operations world, most of my career, um, I was the guy who always had to fix problems. So coming with that background to this industry, I can still look at stuff and say, that's, there's going to be a problem there. There's going to be an issue there. Or I have the, the skill of if somebody's having a hard time, I'm really good at helping them overcome a challenge. Uh, whether it's just stress or, or uh, something to that effect, I'm really good at dealing with issues and, and not creating issues because as an operations guy, I had to deal with all types of egos from a sales perspective in the past. Um, so I'm really good at working with any, any type of person. Sales is something that a lot of people don't realize can cure you through many different fields because you learn about people and Mm. the interaction with a multiple different array of personalities and, um, and I guess product, if you will. And I mean that in like, it can be film as the product, whatever industry it is, that can be the product. And so you learn how to sell it. And it's really kind of interesting. Tell me a little bit too, how you applied those skills when you started getting into acting, because um, two, many people don't realize that, I mean, if they currently are in a position, say that they they're working at a retail location or in a restaurant location, those skills can be taken and carried over and applied if they were interested in going into entertainment, they can use those skills. Oh, absolutely. Um, if there's one thing that, that I've learned is that um, as a business guy in the past, if you didn't set goals for your company or your, your position or your department, you never really could um, reflect on what you did or what you accomplished. And one of the things we did at, our, at my old company was that we set goals like everyone, every other business did. We set goals for the year. And then what we did was we broke it down by quarter and um, breaking things down by quarter allows you to be flexible enough to make changes if the industry or the economy or something requires to make a shift. And so what I did when I got into this industry was I took my organizational skills for lack of a better term, and I created goals for myself for the industry. So I've, I created goals such as, um, you know, what type of, of, uh, projects that I want to work on. Um, I wanted to become, you know, when I first started it, I started as a model actually, and I did print work first. Um, but I wanted to, to develop my, uh, acting skills. I wanted to develop teleprompter skills. I wanted, you know, there was skills development that was just a goal that I created for myself. I created, um, um, uh, KPIs that allow me to track the work, the, the work that I put into it. So I would track, and I still do this today. Um, 
how many submissions I put in a week. One of my goals is to submit to 30 projects a week. And that's just my... I just want to jump in right there because when I was doing sales, we <clears throat> our goal was to work on the power of three and that was, you know, making three contacts per day and yours is 30 a week, which, um, that is pretty close to that. And so what is your, you know, uh, you know, re- your return on your investment to that? Is that pretty high? Well, it's, um, there's, it's not, it's not bad to be honest with you. It's, it's, um, uh-huh. because when you, submit for um, projects in the acting or the modeling world, uh, you're competing against sometimes thousands of got people in the same, sure, 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 same sure. you know, trying to do the same thing as you. And uh, what I've learned though, is that by being consistent every week, I get more opportunities where I've met some people on, on, on sets that when they book a job, they're, they're high-fiving themselves and they're glad that they're there, but they forget to continue to submit f- because that job's going to end. And most of the work I do is commercial work um, where it's not a long-term project. You know, it might be a day, it might be two days, it might be a week, sure. um, but that job's going to end. And so I consistently am um, submitting for projects. I'm consistently... <coughs> um, trying to, <coughs> sorry, trying, <coughs> I'm consistently trying to build new relationships. Uh, I'm looking for ways to increase um, people knowing who I am. And one of the things in business was, uh, and I mentioned our, our broadcast industry earlier, is that we were one of the best kept secrets. So we had this really cool tool, but nobody knew about it. And that's what I'm trying to, to make sure that doesn't happen with, with me personally. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a young actor as far as how long I've been doing it, but I bring a lot of different skill sets to the table. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that people know who I am and that I'm out here and then I'm available. And that takes a lot of effort. It's not something that you can just do overnight. It takes um, practice. It takes time. Um, even, you know, how many auditions I go to, uh, uh, I track how many self tapes I get to actually do. I track how many jobs I do. I track how many, how much money I generate. I track. So, so creating goals for all that stuff really helps me stay focused on where I'm trying to get to. So even some marketing goals that I'll create for myself. Um, if I'm not looking at it, you kind of forget about it because you get focused on whatever you're working on at the time. And so I have a website that um, a friend and I, and I use because we both got into the industry about the same time. We've been on a, on a shoot together and we meet, we talk every week about how we're doing on our goals. So we both basically use the same website to track how we're doing in the industry. And because we look at it every week, we track every single week how we're doing as far as the goal that we're going to try to hit for that quarter. So if I have a goal of, um, let's say, 10, um, uh, 10 industrial jobs for the quarter, I track along the way how I feel about hitting that goal. So if my goal is 10 and at the beginning of the quarter, I feel good. You know, I think I'm going to hit 10, 10 jobs. Um, And then halfway through, let's say I'm only at like three. Well, if I start to predict, am I going to reach my goal of 10? I can start to take other action to try to boost that number up if I don't feel like I'm going to reach it. So we have a color coded system that actually helps us just take a quick look at how we feel that we're doing towards our goals and then make changes that we can make. Now, The hardest part about this industry is that there's things that are outside of my control. I can only submit the projects that are physically there, right? Um, I can only go after work if it's a busy time of the year. You know, there's certain times of the year where it's a little slower. And when it is slower, you kind of have to take that into account when you're setting goals for yourself. Where last December was really slow for me, but the December before was busy. So it was kind of a weird shift for me in 2018 versus 17. Um, 
That's interesting too, because a lot of times you think that there's projects that are going, I mean, time of year is going to be pretty much the same incrementally yeah. when projects are going to appear. So I think it's pretty fascinating in how you are monitoring your progress. And I think it, it's a, a really important point to share with people who are wanting to do anything to be successful is really tracking what you're doing and where you want to go. Because like you said, we can really get lost in forgetting about what we've done. And if we're not continually doing things to can make ourselves move forward, we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. And part of that, you have to, you also have to celebrate your successes and no matter how big or how small they are, if you have a win, enjoy the fact that you won something, you know, and it's, and to me, it's, you know, when I get on a train and head up to New York to do an audition, I get pumped up just, just because, you know, I, it's, and I understand that the, the percentages are pretty low for you to book a job against 500 other people, but, um, somebody's asked me to come in. That's a win, you know, and, and it's just a matter of time, at, at least for me, I feel to where I'm going to start booking some bigger roles because people are now starting to get to know me. They're start, you know, I have some footage now that I can share. I have a decent resume that shows the work that I've done, you know, and, and that's the, for anybody in any industry, if, if you really want to get somewhere, you have to write it down and set some goals for yourself and then take some action on them. You know, if you don't take action, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you start taking action and you track what you do, uh, you'll be surprised how far you can get there. I, I've, it's, it's really cool for me when I get to inspire somebody that's been in the in industry longer than me because they didn't realize that, Oh, if I just did this little extra, I might move the ball forward a lot faster than I thought I could. I really love what you're saying. And I, I want to ask you too about two of your, two of the films that you've done um, project uh, time, project time jump mm -hmm. and uh, no way out. Okay. The project time jump was a, uh, that was a cool one because it was, um, it was scripted, but it was a, uh, a guy from the UK that actually did the work, did the project, and he had people just doing um, portions from their homes. So it was for, it was a cool experience where I didn't have to go anywhere to do it. I you know I I auditioned for it. I got a script. I I did my part, um, and then he put it all together, which was uh, which is really fun. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. It was. Um, there's no no doubt about it. And No Way Out, actually, that is the one where I was the catcalling guy. That was actually the name of the film. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that was the name of the film. But um, the one that I, I could share a little bit about is the, the one at uh, Tit for Tat. That uh -huh. was a fun one. That was my first uh, short film that made it, actually, and it made it into a, um, a film festival at... Um, it didn't win any awards, but it actually got not, it was um, up for the best, uh, best short film. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and I understand that it even had a follow up <coughs> to that film last year. Is that correct? We, um, we have a follow up that we've had written, but we haven't, we haven't filmed it yet. So we're okay. on the track okay. to the film. We'll probably film it in the next few months. One of the other actors is having a baby in July. So we need to make sure he's, He's done filming before the baby's born. I see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> in our best interest to get it done sooner than later. Very um, good. And so you were an NFL con commissioner in that particular yeah. role. Yeah, that was an interest. That was a that was a really good story because it's about concussions and CTE and a real issue that exists with football players. Mm -hmm. um, people would get injured and they'd go back on the field and keep playing. And this story is about a football player who, who um, experienced all that and went, had a bad, bad time. And he ended up kidnapping the commissioner and the doctor that cleared him to play who really shouldn't have. And it was all about, um, you know, for the film, it was all about money and, and making everybody rich and having people buy the tickets to sit in the seats at the stands and all that. And, but the player is the one who really felt the, the hardship of what he had to go through because of others. And, you know, I'm not going to say this is a true story from all of its standpoint, but I think the, the,
the CTE and the concussions, that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, for me, I'm glad to see that the NFL is taking action to try to make it a safer sport for people. Um, yes. Now, granted, there's a lot more flags now than maybe there should be, but they are taking the right steps to try to help um, make it a safer sport for for all to play. But it was a really fun, fun uh, uh, project to be a part of and uh, I'm looking forward to doing round two. I think that that is actually a fascinating project mm-hmm. because there was recently – um, and I, right now his name is not coming to the tip of my tongue, but, um, there was a huge, um, concern about a player who experienced, um, exactly what you're talking about. And he's been speaking out on social media and trying to bring awareness to this. Mm-hmm. And I think, so much so that it has created um, some memory issues and that his son is also speaking out. And I, I, it it is just not right there, but I'm, Mm. I'm remembering some things about this. And so I really like that the things that you have said, not only that the, that it is truth based and that, you know, there's some other things that are going on, but also that the NFL is actually, you know, responding to this issue because, these players get out there when they're so very young and like what this particular player had said is that that was the most important thing. He didn't think long-term down the road about the after effects of all of these different things and concussion after concussion after concussion. And it's so funny because even when we're growing up, we think, okay, we have a concussion, the headache, it's just going to kind of go away and it's no big deal. We move on, but these are very, very serious things. And so I think that this is fascinating and that it is important. And I'm really, um, I'm really inspired to hear and to see your role in this and to actually see the film myself because I have not. So really excited about this. So where can our audience see that film and also get connected with you? Well, that one, um, (coughs) (coughs) sorry, still shaking the cold. Um, That one, I don't know if it's up on YouTube or not, but it it might be. I I will um, definitely get you a link for that though. Um, But it's definitely on my, there's definitely clips of it on my website at www.mikeprov.com. So um, I'm in the process of redoing my whole website right now, so it might look a little goofy if somebody looks at it today, but um, give it a little bit of time and it should be uh, up and running. Um, but okay. tip for that, yeah, it's a, it's a fun one and it's a, um, uh, the, the lead actor does a really, really great job at, at portraying this NFL player, it does a really, really great job. This is fantastic. Do you um, accept requests on Facebook from your audience or is that pretty much a private um Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. No, my, I, I honestly, I'm not a big social media guy, but I became a social media guy because I got into the industry. So um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram specifically for the industry, uh, you know, for trying to, um, I guess, market and promote my, promote the work that I do and, and uh, try and do the things that I think are necessary to, to help me take it, my career to the next level. Well, fantastic. I am really excited. I, I want to thank you so much for being here and sharing your backstory with the audience and also some of the exciting roles that you have played, what you currently have going on, and also the inspiration for the audience to know that what they currently do can be carried over into other areas of life. And all they have to do is one implement it to have the desire and take the risk, be out there, get going on it and then follow it, track it and make sure that they're doing things every day to ensure that they reach their goals. And I think that this has really been uh, a great show with you. I want to thank you again. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you very much. It's been, it's been my pleasure. I just, um, I, I, I'm someone that loves helping people. So it's um, whether it's, helping, it doesn't matter how, you know, I, I, the one thing that I've, I've learned is that being in the industry for such a short period of time, there's a lot of people that have helped me learn the things that I would never know about this business. And, um, I just, I love 
you know, passing the, the torch to someone else to help them move their, them, their dream forward. That's how I feel too. So um, I'm really excited to share your website again with the audience before I uh, let you go. Okay. It's uh, www.mikeprov.com. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. Please make sure to share the show with your friends, your family, loved ones, coworkers, people you don't even know, everywhere you can on social media. We want to um, ensure that Mike gets as much, uh, as much success sharing as possible and networking as possible. And we would do the same for you. So please go ahead and connect with us as well. Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. What a delight today. We are going to have a guest that is going to definitely get you thinking different today. We usually have guests that have done a lot of things on screen or have written books. And it's not often we talk about the things that we hear. And today's guest, oh gosh, it's so exciting because he's voice president of Cashman Commercials. And well, what does that mean? Well, he produces music and copy advertising for radio, TV, and internet. This is big. So it's really amazing because there's over 150 advertising awards that is credited to his name for the work that he's done. It's really exciting because one of the most prestigious awards that you can get, the Clio Award, has been presented to him. And with that, he has just had an amazing selling book called V.O. Tips, Tricks, and Tools, and Techniques. You'll definitely want to check this out to smart and sustain your voiceover career. I'm interested. So let me ask you a question too. Think about this. What do you use your voice for? We use it every day and there's going to be so much that we're going to talk to him about and his best-selling book and not to mention all of the things that he does to help teach people about their voice. He does the coaching. He does the commercialing. He does all kinds of stuff. In addition to this, he's taught undergraduates at, well, some very prestigious universities such as USC, UCLA, and many other things, California Art uh, of Arts. Um, he instructs, he does online coaching, he does in-class, in-person coaching in his studio there in Burbank, California. But without any further ado, you've got to meet him and engage with him and get ready to hear his voice, because he's definitely going to capture you like he's captured me. Welcome, Mark Cashman, to the show. Rebecca, thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. This is going to be a fun, fun show. I am so excited. First thing I've got to ask you, because some of my audience members might be thinking, I don't want a career in voice, <clears throat> or voice acting, and so, but you've got this best-selling book, and it can be so applicable to so many people to learn to use their voice properly. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Well, the book actually was an outgrowth of uh, the fact that I've been teaching now for close to 20 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and I've been teaching for 20 years because I've been writing, casting, uh, and producing commercials for the past 40 years. So about 20 years ago, a number of people had basically said, why aren't you teaching? And, and um, so I threw my hat into the ring and realized that um, uh, there were a lot of people out there who were teaching who were, let's say, uh, voice actors, uh, but they didn't understand what went on on the other side of the glass in terms of casting and producing and directing uh, okay. voice acting. So, so basically, the book was just an, an, an outgrowth um, of, well, my 40 years of, of experience in the studio 
writing, casting, and producing and directing people. So, so that's cool. And then the past uh, 20 years, yes, I've been teaching uh, in studio in, in, uh, in Burbank, California, uh, also in my home studio up in Santa Clarita, California. I've also uh, recently, about oh, five years ago, brought my classes online. So now I'm working with the people all over the world. And I'm, I'm just, it's, it's, that's the coolest thing uh, that I get. I've got... Uh, I have students in South Africa. I've got students in Australia, in Tokyo, in London, and in, in, in Toronto, in, in all over the world. And, and it never just ceases to amaze me that, that, uh, that I can just click on the computer a couple of times and all of a sudden I'm talking to somebody in Melbourne or I'm talking to somebody in Johannesburg. And we're working just like I'd be working with somebody right down the street. It's just fantastic so 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 yeah so uh my class is in studio online uh, uh they've been they've been terrific Mark, and the book oh and the book you asked me about the book yes. again the, the book is just again an outgrowth and uh, of of uh, everything that i've uh, uh, been doing for the past uh, uh, 40 years and um and it's been it's it's been terrific because also uh i get to when i send people homework when I send them performance homework, when I'm coaching them and working with them, uh, not only do they have to prepare the material that I send them, but I also give them reading assignments from my book so that it's of a piece. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, too, I think that this is really wonderful groundwork for those who are wanting to get in the industry. And I also think it's great for us to be aware of how we come across when we're speaking, because sometimes we don't realize what our intonation and our inflection is conveying to people um, just in general. So this is, I think, a very important piece, especially when those who've been watching my show for a long time know that I'm really about making sure that we have healthy relationships in every aspect of our life. And one of the most important things is that our words and the way we speak match our behaviors. And this is, this is a really, really good component. And I just absolutely love that this is something that we're talking about today. And something you just mentioned a second ago is that you may talk to somebody in Melbourne or in just anywhere. And I know there's different dialects, but when you're coaching, how are you able to master coaching skills with people from different countries in connection with our English language? Well, that's the whole thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your accent is. Acting is acting. Storytelling is storytelling. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're speaking English, or at least in English that I can understand, I would then I can communicate with them and 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 basically the skills are the skills are the skills and Perfect. and that does not matter what their accent is they still have to be able to interpret a story act and 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 basically uh, do what their job is to do and that's tell a story I love this and it's so amazing where we're at in society in the terms of visual AIDS, because we really rely on this a lot, but we go back to things like fireside chats and, and storytelling as children, and we are really able <coughs> to grow so much when we use um, the auditory senses in combined with our imagination. There's so much growth there, and I think that we should take this so seriously and embrace the fact that we can still do this. We don't have to rely simply on visual technology now or That's watch right. me all the time, even though this is something that I do promote, you know, I do promote actors and actresses on the show. And, but we, we do want to take time to think about how much benefit we receive from voice. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, the publishing industry, um, in terms of the actual numbers of books that are published on a yearly basis and the sales of those books, that has come down, down, down mm -hmm. because people don't read as much as they do. But the one growth area of publishing is audiobooks. That has trended up, 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 up. There are now more and more audiobooks and more and more audiobook narrators out there than ever before. 
because now you can download an audiobook from the cloud and and it, it's not before it was uh, you know first it was books on tapes it was an actual right. tape. it, was, it was a cassette i then, remember this <laughs> then it, then it's books on cd and they still have cd's you go into a bookstore and you'll still see cd's but nowadays you know people are just downloading books onto their kindle and uh, and audiobooks and that's the beauty that's that's one of the one thing that's one thing i want to explain to your listeners people will think Oh, voiceover, I have to be an actor. You don't. You don't have to be an actor. Not everybody is an actor. Not everybody can be an actor. And I always joke about the fact, I said, if everybody was an actor, I think I'd kill myself. But that said, the one thing, I make a distinction between voiceover and voice acting. So I'm really glad that you brought that up because that was going to be my next question. Mm -hmm. Someone was coming into the industry saying, okay, what what am I going to be if I'm trying to pursue this? Am I a voiceover artist? Am I a voice actor? So I'm really glad you're addressing this right now. Absolutely, because just think, voiceover does not require much acting. 2.9% financing for 60 months on all vehicles in stock does not require much acting, okay? That's a legal tag. Voice acting, yes, that requires, well, acting, characterization, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the Venn diagram, voiceover, voice acting. What do they share? What's the area that they share? Storytelling, storytelling. Mm -hmm. You can tell a story without having to be an actor. Just think of all the nonfiction audiobooks that are out there that that cover history and science and society and religion and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Non-acting information. And there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of amazingly articulate people who are not necessarily interested in acting and doing character work, but they can still tell a story. Yes, yes. And one of the benefits that you mentioned earlier with your online coaching as well is that if someone wants to break into this industry and it's something that they've thought about doing, they can actually do this now from home. I That's had a exactly guest, right. Mm-hmm, I had a guest on my show not too long ago who said way back when she had done um, some narrations and she, it was kind of like being in a sweat box in a sweatshop. I mean, they were just in these narrow rooms and not getting just, it was just kind of a, a not, prestigious area or even kind of a businessy environment, but now you can do this from home. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no question about it. And the cost of, of, of that technology, the cost of putting together a home studio has come down, down, down again, technology. We all know that, that the cost of, of, of technology, that's there, there's even an equation. I'm trying to, I can't remember. I always blank on the name of this equation that basically says that as technology increases, the cost decrease. That's what happens there. So, yes, yeah, so putting really, together a home studio is right now is very, very affordable. It's really interesting. I'm wondering, too, Mark, how you ended up just getting into this business. How did you start getting into voice, voices itself, just yes, identifying your own and moving into this? I, you know, it's, it's really a come, it's, it, for me, it was, it was falling in love with, with radio and what I call the theater of the mind. Mm. Yes. I, so I, I, you know, I, I, I love visuals. Obviously we all love visuals, but I was particularly drawn to the theater of the mind radio. And so uh, uh, way back when, uh, uh, when I first started my career, Um, I decided to come to Los Angeles to be a radio commercial producer. Mm. And I listened and and the person who inspired me uh, was was a a, a gentleman by the name of Stan Freeberg. And if people don't know who Stan Freeberg is, they should look him up. F-R-E-B-U-R-G. Stan Freeberg uh, was the the godfather or the grandfather of modern humorous radio. I love he, it. He would come. He would uh, create commercials that were funny, not just informative, not just an announcer, but actually funny and entertaining. And I loved that. I just, I, I said, that's what I want. I heard one of his spots, a number of his spots, and and I said, that's what I want to do. And I came out to Los Angeles forty years ago, 
to do just that. And, and, and uh, here, I, I cannot believe that 40 years later, I'm still doing it. I, I just, I have to pinch myself every day that I've got this beautiful studio, that I've, I've got the studios in Burbank, uh, that I've worked with people all over the world, and I'm still doing what I intended to do 40 years ago. May, probably because I'm just absolutely relentless and, 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 uh, and, and just insanely focused. And, uh, but, um, I, but that's what you have to do, I guess, in order to, to really do it. But Mark, too, don't you love what you're doing? I, that's the other thing, too. Yeah. I know I have, there are a lot of people out there who I know are burnt out by the, by the industry, by the business. It's just the opposite for me. I love it more today than I did when I first started. And when I first started, I was insane. I was just absolutely, totally focused. And, and uh, I was like a little terrier on your pant leg. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I do. This is so much fun because there's so many things that you can do with your voice. I mean, if you think about, there's so many famous people who have um, done everything from cartoons to have landed major parts in roles just on their voice alone. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, um, uh, many, uh, many times, <clears throat> uh, celebrities, again, the movie studios, et cetera, et cetera, and TV, they, they hire celebrities for their voice alone, mainly because their voices are what they call sticky. Okay, okay. So, for instance, okay, there are certain voices of certain celebrities that you can hear in your mind. Yes. Okay. Yes. They're sticky. So, for instance, if I were to, to, to say Sylvester Stallone. Yes. You could hear his voice in your head. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jack Nicholson. You can yes. hear his voice in your head. There are certain voices that you just evoke the name and you can hear the voice. This is so true. They're sticky. And this is why, this is the other reason that, that the movie studios hire celebrities to do the big animated films. Okay. Not that only their, not only their marquee value, yes, their marquee value is very, very important with the, you know, their name attached to it, but it's their voice that people are totally familiar with. That makes so much sense. I mean, yeah. it, it does make so much sense. I mean, when you pick up the phone, you can recognize who it is. If I mean, after you have spoken to somebody enough times or if it's yes. family. Oh, yes. But that makes a lot of sense. And for the entertainment industry to be doing that, that, yeah, I mean, you, you've just said something that I, just obvious to me now why they would do what they're doing. Yes. But I never heard the term sticky before. So this is something yes. to learn. Absolutely. And I to learn Plus, so don't forget, more. right. The, these are some, again, the, not only are, do they have sticky voices, but also they're hiring the best actors in the world. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to worry about whether they're going to, you know, be able to act their way through a, uh, uh, through a, a movie. And let me tell you, those celebrities love the fact when they do an animated movie, that they don't have to get up at four in the morning to be in the studio to do makeup and wardrobe and everything else like that. Yes. They can saunter into the studio at 10, 11, or 12 noon in their jeans or in, even in their pajamas and, right. they don't, and, and just do their thing behind a microphone and don't have to worry about lighting and makeup and the, the minions of people running around. They just walk into the studio, do their thing, and leave. And it's the, it's the easiest gig in the world for them. That makes so much sense. And you've worked with a lot of, a lot of celebrities. And a people. few, a few. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and again, you know, people are, are people, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, uh, um, I was just, again, talking to my daughter about this, you know, when you live in Hollywood, uh, you see celebrities all the time. And, True. and, you know, if, if you're not used to seeing, you go, Oh my God, there's so-and-so. But in Hollywood, uh, in Los Angeles in general, uh, you know, you could have a, you could be having lunch and there's a celebrity sitting right next to you at the table right next to you. It's it doesn't matter. People are yes. people. Yes. No. I totally agree. I grew up in the in the area, and so I'm familiar with what you're talking about with what you're talking about. And I know that there are other people who are kind of thinking, "Wow, this is great." Well, you're around it all the time. Yes, you realize that we all we all are people, and we 
we do the things that we love to do or things that we have passions for. And this is what your passion is for and what you're very, very, very skilled at. And it's very impressive. It's proof when you're getting the awards that you're getting. You have a lot behind your name. And I would love for my audience to be able to connect with you and be able to acquire some of the skills that you have to offer them. Thank so you. if you can share with them how, one, to get a copy of your book, because uh-huh. they're going to need that if they're going to be in your class. Yes. And then how to get connected <clears throat> with you um, so that they can either audit your class or enroll in your classes. Okay. Well, there are a lot of ways, you know, <clears throat> it's interesting, the... Uh, um, there's almost a, there's an embarrassing amount of information of on me on on the internet. <laughs> um, I, I still I, I you know what what do they say? Uh, uh, if you ever want to see what's going on, Google yourself every so often and see what's going on. And I oh, sometimes yeah. I just I can't believe it. But then I realize I I I do I've got a, a lot of online presence only because well the nature of my business and and the fact that I'm working with people all over the place. But well, you can, you're good. You do, Mark, really. I mean, oh, don't be modest. You well, deserve, you really deserve um, to be out there and the credibility and notoriety that you're receiving from your work. You're good at what you do. You're experienced. You loved it. You love it and you're ready to help people. This is what. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that is the one. That's, that, that, that it's, I mean, I do, I, I, I do online, one on one coaching pretty much every day almost vir- virtually every day. So that's the whole thing is, is that, um, you know, people can have access uh, to coaching, even if they can't be one living in LA, even if they can't commit to, let's say four Saturdays in a row for a course, they, I also uh, uh, offer one-on-one coaching and basically one-on-one coaching basically means we schedule a session online at our convenience, our respective convenience. Uh, so, uh, and, and so people can book me, Mark, M-A-R-C, Cashman, C-A-S-H-M-A-N. So just if you Google my name and you'll come up with a whole list of just insane amount of things. You can contact me at Mark, M-A-R-C, at CashmanCommercials.com and then and, and contact me and I'll always get back to you. Um, you can, oh, that's the, that's the other thing. If you're interested in one of my courses or something like that, I'm the only, as far as I know, I'm the only teacher in the world who offers audits where you can audit one of my classes. So if you live in LA, you can literally come in to my studio in Burbank, physically, in person, in three dimensions, drive to the studio park and come into the actual studio and be a fly on the wall in one of my classes. And I offer and I, I give, I give uh, uh, auditors, I give them all the materials that the mm-hmm. students have so they can follow along and be a fly on the wall. And so I've got that, but I also, you can also audit online as well. I offer that as well. You don't have to live in LA to audit a class. And you could be in your pajamas uh, somewhere in London or, or Johannesburg or anywhere else in the world and still be a fly on the wall in that class, which is really, really cool. Yes, like the celebrities that go in in their pajamas to do. That's, that's exactly right. So in, terms of, that. <clears throat> in terms of my book, you can find my book on Amazon, V-O-V hyphen O-H exclamation point. That's the title of the book. You can get that online. If you, however, write to me directly, you also have, so with, when you go to Amazon, they'll send you the book and you'll get it quickly. If you write to me, however, and want an autographed, personalized copy of the book, it's just a little bit more expensive and I will send that to you and you can, and you can do that as well. Yeah. That's the way to yeah, absolutely. So, in other words, well, again, it's totally up to you. I, I, I make, I, you know, I offer that. And, um, and what else, what else, what else? And uh, we have an e-newsletter that comes out 
frequently to keep everyone posted on the things that you're doing. Uh, you know, I, 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 Rebecca, I, I, I have been a little remiss in my newsletter. I haven't been d- keeping up with it. It's only because I've got so many balls that I'm juggling at the same time. It's, 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 it's <laughs> difficult to, 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 uh, to keep. But I try to be, you know, uh, you know, I try to keep that up. I, I don't do it as often as I should, but I, I, that's my, that's my uh, New Year's resolution is to keep my newsletter going a little bit more. But I do send out, but I'm constantly sending out announcements about upcoming classes, workshops, specialty workshops, and auditions as well. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. So someone that takes your classes yes. and they are ready to get out and start acquiring some yes. positions, some paid opportunities. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, this is fantastic. I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I try to offer as much as I possibly can to, well, everybody all the time. And um, and yeah, I mean, again, between the classes and writing and uh, performing and 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 uh, uh, I do a lot of public speaking and yes. and and <clears throat> just all those things. Every day is pretty much packed. That's a good thing. It's a very good thing. I'm not complaining. I I, I always say better busy than bored. Oh, no kidding. I, I'm with you 100%. Mm-hmm. I love to try to keep my mind occupied. And I especially love when I'm helping other people and helping them acquire resources that give them options to make their life more successful or be able to move forward in some direction that is more enhanced than what it is now. So I'm really excited about what you have to offer the audience in your uh, social media, in your newsletters, in your book, in your voice coaching and the opportunities that you're presenting along with it. And I want to thank you so much for being here today to share that with my, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's, it's, it's uh, again, you're welcome. I'm, anytime you want to do another show, I'm available. And, and uh, uh, I always say I'm around like a donut. I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And the pun with that, when I'm a retired police officer, I love that too, Mark. <laughs> that, was, that is classic. Okay. So um, again, if you ever, ever, ever have anything that you want to promote or you have a new book coming out or you want to reach out to the audience, we are definitely going to have you back because thank you so much that'll be so much fun yes i think these skills are essential to relationships in many many ways not just in a business context so thank you thank you rebecca it's been a pleasure pleasure talking with you today oh likewise and i want to thank all of you for tuning in today i hope that you now can see some other things that may be available for you to learn as a skill and be applied in different areas of your life. You have so much opportunity to develop relationships with your children, with your parents, with your coworkers, and maybe even in a business aspect that you hadn't thought of before. And all of those can be done through the use of your voice. And how can you learn a little bit more about that? Well, you can talk to Mark. 